Good afternoon, everybody. Phil Simons here with Columbia Grain and your Friday afternoon weekly grain market recap. Well, let's go ahead and dive right into it as the weather definitely continues to drive the prices all over the place and really put a lot of downward pressure on the markets here this week. So I'm going to share my screen with you and we're going to we're going to navigate over to our favorite website, ColumbiaGrain.com. And over in the upper right hand section to the producer solutions tab, and that'll take us over to our producer solutions link where we house all of our pertinent data that could be potentially driving the markets around. But again, this week, what we are really kind of monitoring continually uh, is going to be the weather as we continue to get further and further into the planting season and right on the cusp of the, uh, the wheat harvest season uh, as well. But the things that were actually driving the markets around here this week um, was really centered continually uh, against the weather. Uh, there were reports this morning uh, that Paris milling wheat was down rather significantly last night. Uh, after Turkey announced that they will ban uh, all wheat imports from June 21st through October 15th and potentially later, uh, given the market condition as we get closer to the October 15th current deadline. And really, they were reporting that they were trying to, to protect their domestic uh, price harvest season uh, at, at, during that time. And really, the, the kind of interesting thing is that 60 to 70% of Turkey's imported wheat typically comes from Russia. So it will be interesting to see, you know, what the uh, what the cash implications will be on logistics and in and, and the cash market as we continue to get closer and closer to, the, to that uh, time period. So definitely something to continue to monitor uh, as we go forward. Uh, the other thing that we were looking at is, uh, is continued planting pace. Uh, really in Argentina, they were coming in at uh, wheat planting pace currently at about 26% with no real major issues uh, that we can see right now, at least. Uh, so nothing to get too overly concerned about. Now, the other thing that we really have been monitoring continues to be the, the crop progress and the conditions report uh, of wheat here in the U.S., along with uh, the French wheat. And the French wheat conditions actually came out slightly improved week on week. Last week, we were at 61% good to excellent. And this week, it looks like French uh, wheat is coming in at 62% good to excellent. So a slight increase on the week. But again, still much lower than where we were last year uh, at this time, which was at 88% good to excellent. When we take a look at um, the winter wheat conditions uh, for the U.S. that we actually had out here on Monday, uh, we see that we actually did increase one percentage point uh, in the U.S. for winter wheat as well, coming in at 49% good to excellent. Again, significantly higher than where we were last year at 36% good to excellent. And again, when we look at where the winter wheat percent uh, harvested is, we are starting to see uh, some of the southern states really uh, getting into the thick of uh, winter wheat harvest. So definitely something to continue to monitor as we go forward. Uh, the other thing that we saw here today uh, was that uh, Russia, they actually did declare a state of emergency uh, for, I believe it was 10 regions that were impacted uh, by frost and freeze damage events that happened back in May. Uh, but really what we're seeing today and, and, and earlier this week was the potential uh, moisture um, that, that we're actually seeing coming into a lot of the Black Sea growing areas. Uh, so that was definitely pushing markets down a little bit this week. But speaking of what the what the direction was in the markets, we see that, uh, again, um, you know, it felt like we were going about a million miles an hour this week. And for corn, we really didn't see much of a change, actually zero change week on week. Uh, but we did see for new crop, the weekly range was 13 cents. Uh, but when the dust settled here this morning uh, for corn futures, we saw that the, the weekly change was actually zero. When we look at new crop soybeans, um, the weekly range, we had a 37 cent range. But on week on week, we actually lost 26 cents there. Uh, when we take and turn the page and look at the, the wheat complex for September, uh, we see that Kansas actually had a 73 cent range and actually had a net loss on the week of down 46 cents. Similarly, in Chicago, we had a 76 cent range there. We were down about 48 cents uh, week on week in Chicago, September futures. And Minneapolis, uh, similarly, we had a 66 cent range there and actually lost 48 cents uh, week on week uh, in the September futures. Uh, so we really have been seeing these knee jerk reactions to you know, the weather markets and that that's exactly what the weather markets do. So I just wanted to kind of highlight here, you know, what we have seen, you know, over the last couple months um, in Kansas, September uh, 24 futures specifically. 
just to, just to just to show what the weather markets have done and what we've experienced over the last three months here. But if we look at the low that we actually saw back in, uh, in early March this year, Kansas, September, we've actually gained roughly about $2.08 uh, from the from those March lows. And we topped out uh, at seven sixty dollars here recently. And within the last week and a half, we've actually taken uh, a pretty sizable correction out of the futures markets, given the fact that you know, we are starting to see some moisture return back to the Black Sea area, which is allevi alleviating some of the concerns uh, that we were seeing early on the potential production uh, that they may be facing over there. So we did see the markets correct themselves down by about 80 cents uh, from what we saw earlier, about a week and a half ago here. Uh, so again, just trying to highlight the importance of getting your open orders out there and working and really for anything, if it's for a cash contract, if it's for a basis contract, a hedge to arrive contract, an accumulator contract, whatever it may be, uh, definitely just trying to highlight the importance of having those standing orders out there and working because of these knee jerk reactions that we just continue to see, you know, along with just the overall volatility when we when we are looking at you know, the weather markets and the overall implications that they actually do have uh, on the day-to-day -day business that we do see. So again, just please get your orders out there and working, get a hold of your local managers, your buyers, your merchandisers, and just go over all the different options that we have in our Columbia Producer Solutions platform. Uh, other than that, we're going to go ahead and wrap everything up for the week here. I hope everybody has a great weekend. And remember, when the market is wrong, it doesn't pay to be right. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll talk with you next week.